Hi guys, um, so before the video actually starts, I do want to do a little trigger warning because it is going to be talking about my experiences with mental health, which will include uh, mentions of self-harm, uh, suicide, and other very triggering things. So if you guys get triggered by that kind of things, please don't watch this video. Uh, just to let you guys know so that you guys can help yourselves when it comes to your own mental health. Right now, so I'm very happy. And so, yeah, so here's my story. Uh, when I was a kid, I had a pretty traumatic experience. And I'm not going to get into it because it's still pretty personal and it involves somebody else and that person doesn't want to be on the internet, they don't want to be involved in this. So, <laughs> uh, this uh, traumatic experience happened when I was a kid and I, I kind of pushed it away. I forgot about it for a really long time, for years. And then I went to my church at the time. I went to a uh, Bible camp. And I have to say it was the most fun thing, not only because it was snowy, but also because I got to meet the worship band and I got to show them some of my original songs. And every single year that I would go, I would talk to them and show them more of my songs. It was really cool. I, I don't know what my emotions are today. I'm looking into the uh, viewfinder, and I just look dead inside. Hey, but at least I have some pop and makeup today, which I did in like a minute. So <laughs> I can share that with you guys sometimes because <clears throat> I don't know. It's my personal thing uh, that I don't really like spending too much time on makeup unless I have like a performance or something. But <clears throat> anywho, back to the traumatic experiences. <clears throat> so, uh, one of the years I went to this place, I found out one of my friends was self-harming. And that was a very big trigger. So, I ended up uh, getting really depressed. And when I got home, because the camp was about a week, when I got home, it was getting worse. And so, a little bit after that, I hurt myself for the first time, and it was only something just small and didn't even bleed or anything, but it was still self-harm. And that's what people, what, what people really don't get about self-harm is it's not just cutting and bleeding a shit ton. It can be anything. It could be giving yourself bruises, hitting your head against a wall, pinching yourself, scratching yourself, burning yourself. And it, if you're intentionally inflicting harm upon yourself, doesn't matter if it's cutting or not, it's still self-harm. So that's what a lot of people don't realize, but I'm, I've uh, been noticing that people are starting to bring it up more and more. And so I'm glad that that's being brought up because I've met a couple of people who are like, I didn't realize that that was considered self-harming. And... Uh, yeah. Uh, like, and that was before they even knew that they had depression or anxiety or anything else that they might have been going through. And so, yeah. Uh, but back to the story. So I ended up being really upset about it. And I told my sister one day when we were out visiting my grandma with my dad. And so we talked about it. We talked to my dad with my dad about it. And it kind of blew over. I, just, I stopped feeling that way for a really, really long time. I felt really guilty about hurting myself though. Which, after, which as of right now, I am uh, over a year clean of self-harm, which I'm really proud of myself at. And um, even though this last year has been really shitty, but uh, Throughout my, I think it was about seven or eight years of self-harming on and off, 
what I started to notice about my self-harming is that the next day I would feel even worse because I felt bad and I didn't want to have those scars on my body. Luckily, a lot of the scars faded away and the others that did stay are in places that, you know, aren't going to be seen by the masses. So, but, uh, yeah. Um, so, just like, especially because the only time I would really do it was at, um, at night when I was alone and, like, super upset, like, sobbing or even just unemotional. Um, but anyways, going back to the beginning of everything, uh, it stopped for a while, or at least I stopped talking to them about it for a while. Then it started getting to the point worse again. So my sister started checking my phone, which the whole nother story that leads up to how I came out as bisexual, which you guys will get in another video, okay? Uh, but anyways, so, uh, then I started getting more anxiety attacks as I got into high school, um, which I don't really real I don't really remember how they manifested themselves at least in high school but now it's turning into like physical pain which ow <laughs> for one but um for my uh how I experience depression brings wildly from feeling just completely numb and not wanting to do anything to wanting to cry over the smallest things because it is the bigger thing building up and building up and building up and then I cry over I forgot to return something to a store or I bought something that was too expensive and I feel guilty about getting it and stuff even though it was supposed to be a gift for somebody else and then when I tried to return it it didn't work because if something that wasn't returnable, <sighs> if you do that, that's my cat playing with a bag mask because of the smoke in California. So, TLDR, uh, I get upset about the little things because of its big things, I repress. I repress and repress and repress until my pencil broke. And I don't know. Cause I don't have the pencil sharpener. And I'm at home. And so on and so forth. Uh, yes, I I am an actor. That's something I do. Uh, I get. Um, so. Uh, and my anxiety is even worse because it manifests in physical pain and in the middle of the day wanting to quit work. <laughs> so, that's always fun. Especially when you're broke and need money and you have bills. So, uh, I stopped going to therapy like sometime last year and stopped taking my medicine because for about six months I was on Lexapro. And I know like my personal life who tried that and it didn't work for them, but for me it worked pretty well, especially at the low dosage that I was getting it. It didn't make me feel like I wasn't me, but again, that's just me and because of my chemistry and how my brain was going that it worked for me. It doesn't work for everyone. Like, test with your doctors if you're looking for medicine and like figure out what works for you rather than what works for other people because everyone's different especially in brain chemistry like nobody even experiences depression the same ha like the symptoms may be the same or similar but how we experience it is so different <clears throat> so I actually recently tried uh, to enlist in the Navy and I lied about my history with mental illness and I went to boot camp for about a month, which I'll tell you the entirety of the story on another video, and especially information about 
separations or sets uh, and how that is because when I was doing my research on YouTube about the military, I don't think I saw any videos about separations, so I'd like to do that so that people have a little bit more information. Um, so basically, so basically, um, I tried to look the Navy and as soon as I got there, as, as soon as I stepped off in the bus and they started yelling at us to go, 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 and we kept running into the hallway, uh, is when I realized, I don't want to be here. My anxiety and my depression came back with a vengeance, and it was the worst that it has ever been for me, especially now that I recognize that I had those things. And this was just this year, 2018. I, the next day, because they make you stay up all night, uh, just so that they can get you on the same sleeping schedule with everyone else, which I get, but also, it hurts, because basically we are standing all the time, and carrying big, big sea bags that hurt your neck and your back, and we're so fucking heavy! Why did I, why did I join the Navy in the first place? Some old weak little piece of shit who can't, <laughs> who can't do the mile in under 15 minutes. And they wanted us to do a mile and a half in under 14, eventually. Why did I think that was a good idea? Even now I'm slow. Even now I'm slow. I'm trying to set up to be a good YouTuber, but this is how I resort. But I'm gonna try to do this because my neck hurts when I don't. So, yeah. Um, but basically, uh, the next day, uh, after we had not slept, uh, was a moment of truth. Where if you didn't disclose anything from having a child, or just finding out your significant other is pregnant or something, uh, to, uh, having a history of mental illness to drug use, uh, that's when you tell them. Even if people haven't though, they, uh, your recruiters, if they're not good recruiters, tell you not to say anything. And that's what they told me to do, because I told my recruiter that I had this issue, that, that I was over it, and at the time I thought I was. But see, with me personally, it's a lifelong issue that I have to constantly fight, even if I have good years. So, cheers to that. Also, I really like this mug. I got it from TJ Maxx, and it's one of those handmade ones or at least hand painted, and I absolutely am in love with it because it says inspire on it, on both sides, and so it's my love because I need inspiration a lot. Like even what uh, got me to do this video today was I was watching a um, a YouTube video uh, about uh, mental illness and I was like I want to rant about mine so, yeah. <clears throat> so I uh, after I told them that hey I didn't disclose I have a mental illness and I was sobbing as I did so because I did not want to be there I wanted to go home I was not ready to be away from my family also Fuck that place. Like, if you are in the Navy or in any of the military, I thank you for your service, but I could not do that, and how they treat you was very, very, very negative for me. Because instead of calling you recruit, they called you female or male, and <laughs> it felt very degrading. Also, you couldn't look at them in the eye when you were talking to them, which if you were raised like I am, and taught, look at the person, if you're talking to someone, look with them in the eye. You're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> a very, very hard time. <clears throat> and so, after I told them, they're like, alright, we're gonna send you home. They're like, alright, how long is that gonna take? Thinking it's gonna be a couple days, or getting ho sent home right now. No. They kept me there for a little under a month. That was the worst time I ever had because I didn't know anyone there. 
didn't talk to anyone for the first week I was there. And apparently, in the laundry room, it has a storage room, like right off the side of it. And so, we didn't get to use that because it was locked off because somebody had killed herself in there. I don't know when, it was, it, but it was before any of our time there, so it was probably either months or years ago. And uh, no disrespect to the family, I don't know if, I don't know who it was, I don't know, but I, and I honestly really feel, but being in that environment where people were depressed and people did kill or did try to kill themselves, uh, was not helping. I got lucky because I was crying in the corner and this girl came up to me and started talking to me. Even though she wasn't supposed to because she was on a watch. So, thank you so much. Because if it weren't for her, I might have, or might have thought at least, of hurting myself. Um, or I would have just gone home even more broken. But luckily, this girl introduced me to another group of girls who became my best friends there while I was there. And I'm still in contact with a few of them, so. <laughs> but basically, um, I got at least to hang around people that were more positive, even though we were in this shitty situation and they also had went through kind of similar shit to me, kind of, a little bit. But, uh, as soon as I got home, it was just a big wave of relief, and I felt so much better. <laughs> and, uh, but lately, it's been coming back because I'm still adjusting. And it's, and honestly, being at boot camp feels like a weird fever dream. I'm a lot more enthusiastic in this than I thought I would be. Shit, my eyes are still dead. Shit, I am still dead. But basically, uh, I still go through this, and after a year of not going to therapy, I finally started talking to a therapist, uh, and this is not sponsored, because they don't know I exist yet, but hopefully someday it will be. Uh, but I went on BetterHelp, due to other YouTubers being sponsored, not me. And I ended up uh, talking with this one therapist, he's really great, uh, and just whenever I'm feeling upset or starting to have a panic attack, I just message him and I'm like, hey, this is how I'm feeling, I think it's because of this, but I'm not sure. So, that's been helping me, and I need help, basically. So, yeah, basically, I'm just trying to figure out my way through this, and I still haven't figured it out, even after... eight years of going through this. Fun. Very. Um, so, I don't really know if there's anything else to say, so I'm just gonna sign off now and probably do a continuation of this later. Alright guys, if you liked that video, give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to get more of my content. And just lighten things up in the comments below, let me know what your favorite boy band is. And if you consider any band that is all male to be a boy band, despite what kind of music they make. Let me know down in the below. Let me know down below. Okay, bye.